So back out on the Great Plateau, now that we have the bombs, we see this pile of rock debris here. And I think it's gonna let that bomb go there and detonate it. And there we go. Now we've cleared out a pathway that wasn't open before. So. From here, I remembered something I wanted to go check out. Oh, but we've got another activated guardian there, so I thought, all right. Let's just not even tempt fate with that one, and then I paused for a minute here because I noticed the weather had changed a little bit. I was looking along on the map here, and I thought, okay, I know where I'm going to go next. So it's a little out-of-the-way area, but I remembered it from the first time when I was playing through the plateau. So I thought, let's go find that. Instead of... Getting too close to the Guardians, I just had Link climb up on the wall here. And you can see it's kind of like a maze area with these, uh, maybe, maybe it was once a garden maze or something like that one time, but... But we'll just make our way out of here. Here you can see another Bokoblin camp, and there's actually a bee's nest up there in the beehive, rather, up there in the tree. And there's our other shrine that we marked up on that cliff there. That's our next major destination, but first I wanted to just take a little detour over here into this grove of trees. It's a squirrel's tail, it's kind of hard to see, but I wanted to get a better vantage point. I was like, let me climb up this tree and have a look through the scope and see if I can see it better. There's another one actually off there by the cliffs, but by the time Link got all the way up here, it was already gone, so couldn't really see it. But I did manage to see something else. It was left behind on the ground that caught my eye. It's like, oh, what's this? So, every once in a while you'll see critters like that running around, squirrels, and later you'll see other animals as well from time to time. So squirrel left some acorns, so I decided to raid the stash. Because it was nowhere in sight at this point, so... Scared it off, I guess. camp and they're dancing around the fire. <laughs> there we go. This is where I was looking to head. There's a 
cabin in the woods here. There's all kinds of stuff to be found around here, like this green stamella shroom. First one of these to be found, it's a, it restores some of your hearts, half a heart rather, but then it also is a stamina restoration item, so. But only when you cook it, it says cook it to, to you know, bring out its stamina restorative properties, so. Let me find a pitchfork. That's another thing that's more of a tool, I think, than a weapon, but I'm not really sure that there's any real need for this kind of a tool in the game, other than using it as a weapon, so I just dropped it for now, so. I just thought, well, don't really need it. I don't, I don't think there's any parts where you have to, you know, use a pitchfork on to move hay around or whatever. Maybe there are, I just don't know about it, but. And here's another torch. And over here, we find a pot lid, which <laughs> is a makeshift shield. It's our first shield that we found, so. And right next to it is a cooking pot, and those are few and far between, but cooking pots are great because they allowed us to actually cook, you know, meals out of our ingredients. So, here it just shows you how to use a shield, because it, strange as it seems to use a pot lid as a shield, it technically will work. <laughs> And you can sit by a, just like a normal campfire. But I'm going around getting some more, another Hylian shroom, getting some more ingredients and stuff that are just lying around here. Within easy reach. Now the first time when I played this game for a little bit, uh, I didn't actually do any cooking because I was kind of intimidated by it. I just thought it's complicated and I don't know what to do and you know, so. But it's actually not that hard. I, I've learned since then it's pretty simple for the most part. I don't actually know a bunch of recipes and stuff, but the gist of it is, you know, just use multiples of similar kinds of items and you'll make better versions of, what, you know, than their individual parts. So, so here it shows you you can, you know, uh, sit by the fire if you want, but I didn't choose to do that right now. Instead, I grabbed some ingredients out of the materials rather out of the um, inventory and I just started with a couple that we had just gotten here sometimes trying to experiment with recipes can backfire which we'll see that in a future part where it does uh, frustratingly something I was trying to do didn't end up working out like I thought but but here we'll just do a little bit of cooking with what we've gathered it's nice and easy, and see we've got a, it recovers four hearts and a good portion of his stamina wheel though. Which is great, because that's a lot more than those things would have done individually. Um, this is much easier, thankfully, than back at the second part when uh, <laughs> I was trying to bake that apple where you have to get the aim just perfect. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff here. So here the game tells you that you can check the recipe, so if you ever want to remake the same thing and you still have it, you know, to check, you can go to the food menu here and it'll show you the recipe if you want. That way you can remember, how did I make that again? Oh yeah, two stamella shrooms and a herbal herb, okay. So, it's kind of handy. But unfortunately it doesn't store recipes beyond that, so you still have to have, you know, one left to be able to reference that, so. So here I just did some more experimental cooking and just thought, all right, we'll just throw in some stuff. It seems like it would fit good. So one apple and two acorns gave us this simmered fruit and you see it restores two and a half hearts. So apples normally restore a half a heart and acorns only restore a quarter of a heart. So if you had just eaten them raw materials, you know, without cooking them, you would have restored one heart, but now since you cook them together, you get two and a half for the same stuff, so. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I got really excited about that one. So what you end up with, you know, differs depending on what ingredients you use and the number of ingredients you use, but generally you can just combine multiples of the same thing if you want a better effect of what it does. So if you want something that restores hearts and you, you know, you can do two or three or even up to five uh, apples or whatever, for example, and then, you know, you'll get something that restores more hearts, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's good to try to combine similar stuff like that. So. But like I said, I don't really know the recipe, so mostly at this point I'm just experimenting, just throwing stuff in there, seeing what happens. That's part of the fun, though. I made some fried wild greens. That's a, that's a new one. There are points in the game where we get to see some recipes, too, as we travel along, but... For now, it's all, all up to experimentation. So this last one, I just tried to do a bunch of random stuff and see what would happen. <laughs> 